Here we are, Freedom Forum 2, hour number two. Um, as you can see, we have uh, Brett Gould. Gould? Mm -hmm. Is it Gould? Yes. <laughs> With yes. us tonight. And uh, there's a reason, our partner Tom, for those of you that don't know, uh, Tom had a stroke a week ago th Tuesday, and he's uh, in ICU at uh, Lafayette General. Uh, has a lot of positive uh, signs, good movement in his left side, uh, minimal movement in the right side. Uh, he doesn't have, what do you call that, the facial distortion or Correct. anything that usually comes uh, the uh, uh, was on the left side of his brain, so the right side. That's amazing how that works. That is correct. It's a crossover. And uh, we just have to pray. It's going to be a long road. Uh, and everybody needs to, to just pray for Tom, for his healing, and that the good Lord will touch him and heal him and be patient. And we also need to pay for, pray for the family. And the, and the people I've gotten to know is his wife Peggy mm -hmm. and her sister and a lot of the family actually his daughter from Atlanta who actually uh, had she life. not been here mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to well he he wouldn't have, he would have been gone that's true uh, you want to talk a little bit about the meeting tomorrow night at Elise's yeah we're going to continue the uh, the meetings as we've done in the past um, I've got several topics I'm going to cover. Uh, we're going to be talking about some uh, current events, more along the lines of what we've talked tonight. We've got some, uh, some self-defense issues that we're going to talk about, some training uh, tips that we can do to improve things. I'm going to go into some herbal medicine, especially for you folks that have the arthritis, the rheumatism, stuff like that. Uh, uh, Jim is under the weather here with the cold, so maybe after, after we get finished here, I'll talk to him about, about, about getting some herb because uh, he's been under the weather. And uh, we're going to continue doing uh, Tom's work until Tom can get back on his feet, and we'll have it waiting for him. Yeah, go ahead and talk, because I'm about to. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk to tonight, uh, everybody has been uh, watching Fox News, talking about what's going on between uh, the Turks and the Russians. For a recap, the first jet was shot down by Turkey as Russia is doing air operations at the request of Bashar Assad in Syria. Then we had uh, a Russian airliner that was downed uh, under mysterious circumstances. First it was a bomb, then it was some type of missile, and there haven't been any resolution of that. Well now in the last week the Turks took it upon themselves to shoot down another <laughs> Russian uh, plane, probably an Su-24, ground attack plane. Well the, the plot thickens because um, the Turk story about why they shot it down uh, does not hold water. Uh, experts have looked at how fast that plane was flying. 17 seconds. Right. <laughs> and where it was and the circumstances around it, and it doesn't fit. Now, the thing I don't know what the people out there know, Jim, is that Turkey extended a five-mile buffer zone of their own accord into Syria. Really? So technically, this plane was not over Erdogan's territory, but now... Let's get to the meat of the story. Why? <laughs> well, it turns out that, that uh, once upon a time, there was a young man named Bilal Erdogan, and he is the son of Precip Erdogan. And it seems he has a taste for black market oil that, oh my God, oh, it's coming from ISIS. <laughs> the Turks. Follow uh, the money. <laughs> yes, they estimate have been paying uh, ISIS a million dollars a day, other sources, say that, that ISIS was making anywhere upwards of $8 million a day off of the oil. Now, what has our good friend Vladimir Putin been doing? Blowing up the oil factories and Something facilities. that should have happened. Well, that's true, but you know, here we are. So the latest, the latest two really serious events that have occurred out of all of this is Turkey has now taken it upon themselves. Now, if you go and look on the map, here's a geography lesson for you for the day. Uh, Turkey is located right off of the south end of the Black Sea. And Russia has a very large naval presence in the Black Sea, which is right off of the, uh, the Ukraine and the, and the Crimea, which is why that whole situation was going on. 
Well, they can pass through the Straits of Bosporus at the Dardanelles, which is Turkish-held territory, and get to the Mediterranean. The Turks have taken it upon themselves to blockade that <laughs> route and to stop Ooh. all Russian commercial and military uh, ventures through that area. Now, on Facebook, I use the analogy that is like a good-sized tabby house cat taking a swat at a 500-pound Bengal tiger. It's admirable, but most people would say it's suicidal. So what does our good friend Vladimir Putin do? <laughs> the latest I just heard was Vladimir Putin just moved 150,000 combat troops, armor and artillery with logistics to the Armenian border with Turkey. Now, let's see who blinks next. Uh, folks, I know Tom has always talked about preparations, about having your bullets, beans, and your Bibles in order. I think we are at a very dangerous time in history because the people who are playing this game have intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles. Mm -hmm. And we may have uh, a weakling in our White House, but I can assure you that the former KGB assassin Vladimir Putin is none of those things, oh. and he has a big stick that he can swing, and he does not have to be quiet when he swings it. And I just see that the Turks are fighting a proxy war against ISIS, which, which by all media accounts, we created ISIS to destabilize Bashar Assad, and what is happening is that is why we... Uh, we warn ISIS 45 minutes before we try to bomb anything and we drop leaflets. And then Vladimir Putin flies over with backfire and bison bombers and just flattens everything, mosques, people, and articles of oil included. So folks, uh, if I were you, I would keep an eye on this because this could have ramifications over here. Uh, as Tom has always said, get your Bibles, beans, and bullets in order because this is serious. This is being talked about as the start of World War III. I need to dispute this. Uh-oh. Because the president said that the most threatening thing to the security of our country is global warming. No, not global warming, climate change. Oh, we have to get political right. terminology. I'm we incorrect. We have to get politically correct climate change. And folks, y'all do know why this term climate change was applied. Because that way, global warming. <laughs> well, well, because the globe wasn't warming. It yeah. hasn't been. It has, it has never done this. I saw another lie in the paper again, written by a local person. You were in shock. I was in shock. Said that four out of the last five years, the temperature has risen on Earth. Uh, where did you get your data? Where, well, where did he get his data? We can go back to that bard of moral authority, Al Gore. Oh, and it's a quite Mr. funny thing. Environmental. He said that we would be underwater by 2014 and all of the polar ice caps would be melting. It's a funny thing. Oh. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, exactly. What is a charter school? What is A charter school is a, is a privately owned school. Under under no control by the local school board. But don't they still get public funds? They, and and this was interesting at the last meeting because we had a school board member there, right? And I made the statement about our budget was twenty three million short last year because of those charter schools. And and I said to him, I said, so I have my facts correct because I know he was in on the budgetary part of it. I said $13.3 million of that charter school was charter school money that we paid out. Us taxpayers paid to a poor, a for-profit school. Most charter schools are run by for-profit organizations. But Jim, that's just like welfare. Is it for gifted students or? No, anybody, anybody. Or? Anybody can go to the school. Right. Here's the part about the interesting part. They get paid on the numbers that they have at the end of September. This is something that I raised Kane about at a Bessie board meeting and it was a very interesting conversation, but we won't go there. But the thing is that in October, if some of the students aren't up to standards, they kick them out. 
And guess what? They come back into the public schools. But the money? It's already gone. It's, 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 they got paid. Yep. And, and that's the charter school thing. It's not just about them being for profit. Well, Jim, that's what they wanted. Like. What they want to do away with is the public school system, period. That's the reason why you always see all of the discipline hard cases stay in the public schools until the October money is paid. And then the month after that, you have all these massive uh, hearings at the, uh, at the juvenile courts because everybody has been expelled and is going to court now because the money's already been paid so they can get rid of their problems. And, and, and nothing against you, but I, I, I find it interesting you ask me at this point in time what a charter school is. And, and the point well, I want to... I don't have any children. I yeah, I, know, I understand that. I'm just making a point, Robert. Uh, the point is that that is a problem today. Information. Information-wise, people like you and I, I'm, I know because I got it, I'm, I'm totally involved in but the, the situation. But the public doesn't know. But the public, in general, if they're like you, don't have any children, they don't know. And they don't realize what's going on. But I have 10 grandchildren, the 11th one on the way, and a great-grandchild. So now a lot of their, those children are out of high school, some in college. But I have a four-year-old brilliant grandson and a two-year-old uh, great-grandson. And that's my concern. I'm going to sneeze on it, <laughs> but... So that's our... It's just about the money then. Well, that's what we were talking yeah. about. Well, that's not what they... Get the money. It's that's the not about segment. education, the mainly. Whole, this whole last Bessie Board election, Jim has gone gone to Baton Rouge and, and is the resident expert on that, that whole situation. And the whole problem is... Millions of dollars were spent by out-of-state billionaires Five to, 10 million. to get people elected to jobs that don't pay. I mean, that in itself is indicative. Obviously, there are big bucks that somebody is going to make because these people were put in power and our children are going to suffer because politicians were allowed to run rampant. Listen, you got the Senate Education Committee guy. And, and I call, his name is Conrad Appel, but I call him to his face Comrade Appel. Comrade. Comrade Appel. Oh, yeah. And, and with justification, he, years ago, when this Common Core thing, and they were signing contracts, 10 days before they signed a contract with a digital book company, Discovery, bought tons of stock in that company. No. Ten days later. Don't we call that malfeasance? No, it ain't malfeasance. Uh, uh, and uh, something more serious. And ten days later, the state of Louisiana signs a contract with them. That's not the best part. I'm sitting in an education committee meeting last year in the House, in the representative side. He's presenting a bill for that book company to become the sole provider of all digital books or hard copy uh -oh. boards. Uh oh. Now, now, after I heard that, some things got mailed to the SEC. The light went off. No, some stuff, paperwork, got sent to the SEC. And guess what? Mm. He's now under investigation no. for insider trading. And by <laughs> the way, and you know what? Nothing will happen. The other shoe to drop is before the political wind blew the other way, our good friend Bobby Jindal is the one who got that mess foisted on us. Because Obama hung that carrot out there for a race to the top money. That was it. $18 million. And, yep. and, 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 and you know what? The sad part is the, the Common Core standards hadn't even been written yet. And what was the, 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 the results of the park testing that you read off at the last oh, meeting? God. The park testing results were so poor <sighs> academically that Jim was fortunate enough to get a copy of, of the results before they were doctored and, and graded on the curve to improve them to make it look good for to, Common to Core. To show you how well Common Core is doing, eighth grade math, geometry I think it was, mm -hmm. 
the the average score across the state was 22 percent when they did the cut they don't call it curve when they did the cut they were satisfactory when they added the numbers to look at the grades and, and see the charter schools the whole deal with charter schools is to run off the public schools, have no school board, you or I or any other parent will have no, no control over your children. And your kids get indoctrinated in the government way. But the, the real deal is that, that, and I've studied this, I know because I've been with the experts, the real deal is they want your kids from day one. Of course. When I say day one, I mean when they babies. They want to set up preschool schools for when they're one to two years old and indoctrinate them from there on out. There's already cases everywhere in the country for teaching Islam, making them do the, the Quran. Sing Muslim songs. Sing Muslim songs, do the prayer rug. Oh, but wait, you can't say Christian prayers in school. Oh, no, that's verboten. God help us if you actually say a Christian prayer or kneel at a football game and pray. Oh, no. I will tell you this, though. I'm proud of a lot of football coaches. Because they stood up. They stood up. Or should we um, say they kneel down? They kneeled down. And the one coach that got fired, this was awesome. The coach that got fired because he his players and they told him not to do it, so the school fired him. School superintendent fired him. So he comes back in the stands. <laughs> Here we go. And after the game, all the parents supported him, and they kneeled down and prayed in the bleachers in the stands. Very good. Guess what? There ain't nothing the school can say to them. Mm -hmm. But we got to have more of that. We got to have more people stand up. Uh, but Jim, this is just more evidence of the double standard that, that, that we can cater to these Muslim jihadis and yet school children can't spray, pray at school, they can't pray on the football field, there's supposed to be the separation of, of, of church and state, but we find the current regime is forcing the Muslim religion upon us. Yeah, That's but not I, a separation. I want to tell you something, you go to a Lafayette High football game, that band leader, that guy got a set of them. Well, he, he it's going to take some people to... They do amazing grace every game. <laughs> well, hey, you know, it, it, it is high time, Jim, and I'm going to put it out there just the way it is, that the Christians need to stop turning the other cheek. we got to go Old Testament. It is time for Amen. Christians to stand up, take back this Christian country, and to boldly and defiantly stand up and say and believe what they think. I'm, that I, we don't have to cater to these people. When I said I was challenging you on the security thing. It's all just done underneath the Jesus flag. Amen. We need to put God back in everything. Take That's the, why we're in the problem we are. They took God out of everything. Exactly, mm -hmm. and they did it very well. There's a DVD called Grinding Down America. They're good little communists. You, that, that DVD, you can get them if you come to one of our uh, Patriot meetings. Uh, we have them uh, available, uh, and and that gives you the history. And this guy, we had him here twice several years ago, the guy that did the research. That'll give you the history of how how they infiltrated and got us to this point in well, Jim, history. Anybody who's who's got any curiosity can go back and read what happened to Joe McCarthy back in the '50s, Senator Joe McCarthy. He sang out loudly and was ridiculed and told that he was paranoid and he was delusional. Oh, Ann, Coulter's, <laughs> Ann Coulter's book, uh, I believe it was Liberal Treason, investigated uh, when the wall came down in the Soviet Union and the KGB files came out that not only was Uncle Joe McCarthy correct, he understated the matter. Number one, the U.S. advisor at the Yalta Peace Conference in World War II, Alger Hiss was a Soviet spy. The Rosenbergs, who were executed for selling nuclear secrets, there was always questions. Ann Coulter solved it. They sold out to the Russians. We were so thoroughly infiltrated, we had more Russians over here than they had over there. Yeah, and, and you see, you know, our delusional leader, 
And the point Actually, Jim, he's not delusional. Actually, this problem is not only does he spout some interesting things, he believes them. He's not oh, deluded. Yeah. Yeah. He believes his malarkey. That's the well, scary part. I want it. We need to. <laughs> well, that, that whole thing about the CO2 system, this story is novel because Barack Obama's jet made as much of an emission as driving 72 cars, cars for, a, for year. a year. You know, I called in to uh, KPEL to the, to the Drive at Five show a while back, and Carol Ross, I believe, was sitting in for somebody. I love Carol Ross. Oh, she's awesome. I love Carol. Carol's one of my favorite Should people. Should have never lost that election. And she was asking questions about about uh, that, that god of climate change, Al Gore. And I said, you know, the first thing about Al Gore is he's a hypocrite because he goes everywhere in a jet, number one. Number two, they have shown that his electric bill burns more juice than probably the city of Generet and New Iberia combined for his one house, okay? <laughs> and if he was living in California, his water usage would probably be a problem too. So I told Carol on the air that I would believe Al Gore when he got an ox cart, grass sandals, and lived in a hut yeah. because his talk matched his walk because he was a hypocrite, a liar, and a thief. And he has made so much money, it is obscene. He, was, he wasn't even a millionaire when he started this. Well, the funny part is, if you ask anybody from Tennessee, I, I, uh, uh, I am uh, uh, on the phone calling about some uh, uh, gun parts up there to a business when Al Gore was first running for president. And when I mentioned Al Gore's name and what they thought of him in Tennessee, I had to hold the phone receiver away from my ear because the man was hollering and cursing so loud. He told me they ran Al Gore and his daddy out of that place on a rail for a reason, that they were crooks. Oh, yeah. And, and here he goes spouting this stuff. And oh, by the way, uh, what I didn't get to tell you when the, when the show uh, finished in the last segment is all of you climate change believers, the last climate change research ship got ice locked in the Antarctica. Not just and, one of them. And had to be a re rescued, what, twice? Not Right, twice, but five ships that try yeah. to get there. But but the, but the ice is receding. The polar you know. <laughs> bears are dying, but they have to get rescued because the ice is so thick, nobody that, that can was, get them. That was like a happy day for Jim, watching that on TV. Oh, I was on the floor. But, I was dying but, laughing. You know how going, they got out of there? They walked across the we'll ice. let someone else get on there. Oh, and, uh, it's all right. Yo, God bless. Yeah. Thank you. And Jim, here comes the other thing. I looked at the news, it's minus 11 in California, in the Sierra Nevadas. Oh my God, if it wasn't for climate change, they would be even colder. Thank God for climate change. And, and, and uh, another call. Oh. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I just called, uh, I had it turned down. I didn't know what y'all was talking about, but a while ago y'all was talking about uh, Jesus and all that. Um, I'm not a real religious man, but I do read the Bible every now and then. Once in a while, didn't huh? Jesus tell his disciples if they didn't have a sword to sell their cloak to buy him a sword? Oh yes. <laughs> you know, and you know, John, that brings up a very interesting thing, and you can Google this. For anybody who doesn't believe me, I have actually Googled this. The Bible is full of parables and actual oh, yes. evidentiary accounts where. The Bible instructed people how to defend themselves and in what circumstances. And if you actually go and Google the Bible and self-defense, you would be amazed at the different passages that relate to self-defense that are, are, are applicable today. It, yeah, it uh, makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. I was just, I was just going back on that, that thing I read about what Jesus said, but I, I'm kind of like, uh, like you were saying a while ago there, I'm, I'm kind of like an Old Testament guy, you know? Oh, John, you and I, we, we, we see on the same page, uh, the Old Testament's coming around more and more. Uh, I, I understand that. I understand that. That's why I hang around with people with cornucopias of information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, John, a lot of people have gone Old Testament because they kind of like that, that guy, David, with the slingshot, except we did a little better nowadays to take yeah, down we, the giants. Yeah, we got, we got some better slingshots. <laughs> yeah, we got better, better slingshots, slingshots and they hold <laughs> more rounds. We're doing a lot better. Grenade launchers, you know. Whatever we uh, need. Yeah, I, can't, I, I, no, I can't get my hands on them. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're still looking for that goat, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're still looking for your goat. Hey. I'm, I'm going to find me one. I'm going to. John. I'm, I'm going to get me some more. The next goat you get, you need to name him Cornucopia. 
Yeah, I will, man, because they're going to have to be, he's going to have to put up with Angel, you know, I got an Angel and... Angel and oh, corner <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, we'll see you tomorrow See you night. tomorrow night. All right. I wanted, I wanted to tell you how, th this is a, a, a really great statement. Obama says a new tax is the most elegant way to stop climate change. You know... Why is it every time a liberal Democrat finds an issue, they always end up digging in somebody else's wallet? But you know what's funny? Lady Margaret Thatcher coined the phrase that says it the best. Socialism is great until you run out of someone else's money to spend. Exactly. It's like... Man. And that's what we've got here. Folks, oh, another call. Go ahead, Colin. They just gave one of the names of one of those guys that shot up in California over there. The last name is Farouk. No! Oh, God, I'm in shock. I'm so surprised. <laughs> hey, I wonder if he was a refugee that came from New Orleans. You know that one got loose that they, 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 they can't find him. And the other one is a funny Middle Eastern name, too. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know what's probably going to happen? Obama's going to get on TV and issue an apology for wasting those guys' ammo and gas to go out and kill Christian Americans. Oh, yeah. He will probably be apologizing for that. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> all right, that's all I want to say. All right, we appreciate the information. Thank you. But, what a shock, Jim. What a shock. We were talking... Three of them together, too. We were talking... Well, could be they more. were vetted. Oh, I'm sure. And we were talking before the show with the production staff that we were going to be curious to see exactly who and what these people are. And lo and behold, we have Muslim jihadis in masks with assault weaponry. Oh, but wait, Obama wants to take an American Christian's assault weaponry, but he wants to give it to the jihadis. But they already have theirs, so but, I guess they're But you proof. know what I like? What, what I saw? Uh -oh. is, is is that that he told the people in Turkey they should close their borders to the Syrians? And you saw what the response was? <laughs> like, yeah, deal with your own border first. I mean, here's... I'm, I don't know. It's scary to think he's the president of the United States. Yeah? It, because he has the goal to tell these people in Turkey to close their borders he has the gall to stand up in Paris, France, and say that, that we have these mass shootings in America, but it doesn't happen anywhere else, and we need gun control, and they just got their city shot up a week before. What? The worst terrorist attack since World War II, and this numbskull is sitting there talking about it never happens anywhere else. Duh! Well, I kind of like it when he makes statements like that. Oh, God. But I'd like, I don't know, I do. I like it when he makes statements like that. Because it puts him right around, right alongside that other clown that's in the White House with him. Joe Biden. Oh, God. You know, the Germans attacked Pearl Harbor. They did? Yeah. <laughs> that's news to us? He, he said that. Amongst other brilliant statements he's made. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I didn't believe that until I saw the video. And, and he actually said that. you got to watch Joe Biden. You never know what he's going to say. But then you have a president that makes a comment that the only place these shootings happen. Well, let me ask you something. He, he's moving back. He's going to move back to Chicago after? No, I think, I think he's probably going to move somewhere else. He seems to like Oprah's compound out there in Hawaii. Of course, the neighbors of Oprah don't like it when they shut the neighborhood down for his behind to go out there. Oh, speaking of that, folks, uh, Jim and I were talking before the show. Did y'all know that in the last seven years, Obama has spent $10 million a year on vacations? Now, we were wondering what it cost for the Sixth Fleet to park off the coast of Africa and fly fighter air cap over his hotel when he took his vacation, because I don't think that was figured into the budget. It's amazing. And do you know, I had a liberal Democrat argue with me one time, well, George Bush went to his house in Texas, and I'm going, okay, let's compare these two things. 
Michelle takes a separate flight to go to Africa. He goes to Africa. The bill over there is millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And Bush goes to his own house and trims the bushes and cuts the field. Can y'all make a moral equivalency about of this? And invites military wounded warriors to his ranch. And we haven't hit on the big one. Y'all can say what you want bad about Bush. And I didn't like everything that oh, Bush no. did. No, his second term was. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you what. His mother-in-law wasn't living in the White House like Michelle's mama is. Yeah. Why are we paying for Michelle Obama's mother to live in the White House? Why is this? Here, let me, let me give you some stats about climate change conference. Uh-oh. Here it is. Car service, hotels, mm -hmm. and accommodations for the president and other administration officials to attend climate change talks in Paris are costing taxpayers nearly $2 million, according to the government contracts. Well, somebody lives well. Obviously, it's not us. And, and uh, it says the COP21 meeting, that's that, the name of the thing, is a powerful rebuke to terrorists began on Monday. Representatives from 195 countries traveled to Paris. <laughs> Listen to this. Burning 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide for the United Nations conference. <laughs> well, we knew they were full of hot air. We just didn't know it was that much. The tab alone for the motorcade totals $784,825. The State Department issued $407,868 uh, contract to Berifian limousines and international, so, and it goes on and on. $9,042 for accompanying press totaled $376,000. But you know what the whole point of this is, Jim? The scary part about all of this is, folks, this was a meeting to see how the one world government people can dig in American taxpayers' pockets to get money to pay other countries because we're supposedly uh, uh, climate change uh, uh, violators. And that's what this is about. Now, for those of you who are uninitiated, this is the way this is going to go down. Brother Obama and Loretta Lynch, our esteemed Attorney General, U.S., has got the Safe Cities Initiative, where UN <laughs> partners will be enforcing the law along with local law enforcement in the big cities. Well, here it comes, the other shoe drops. They will have a climate change court under the UN that will be over us. So Obama will have a law enforcement branch that will actually hold Americans accountable to UN law and force them to go to that court. First of all, that's not going to happen because it's unconstitutional. It is, but the... Me, my wife, we were talking oh. about where Obama was going to live. She said just last week it was said Obama and Michelle will move to New York following the Clintons. Guess they hope to swap houses with the Clintons. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you understand what that statement means? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jim, Thank you, dear. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would want to swap houses with the Clintons in any way, shape, or form. Who knows what's the <laughs> Well, the problem that we got, we understand that Uncle Bill has bad table manners. Yeah. We just, I don't know if I'd want to follow him anywhere. And I liked a, a cartoon I saw. On Facebook this week with Hillary and Clinton sitting together, Bill, and uh, said she says it's about time to have a uh, a, a woman in the white a woman in the White House. <laughs> There've been a lot of women in the White and House. He says, "Been there, done that." <laughs> Hello, caller. Go ahead. It looks like we have a bunch of dead UN people that come to Louisiana. Oh, look! You know what's a funny thing? Have you ever seen one in blue helmets? Oh, yeah. You notice how they shine in the sun? Yeah. I have a feeling you could probably see that with them letters for quite a ways, huh? <laughs> now, but, I can see, but I can't see too well. Now, <laughs> let me tell you what would happen. The first time we see you in in Louisiana, Department of Wildlife and Fisheries is going to issue a new a new order. You can't spotlight them. You got to have a license, and there's a there's a there's a limit. 
And then all of a sudden, every Cajun with a spotlight and a 30 out 6 is going to have UN helmets sitting on their fence posts outside their house. And we don't know how they got there. And they're full of bullet holes. Yeah. It, actually, the, there was a comment on Facebook where the guy said, if they bring those people here, that we're going to stop spotting deer. And oh, yeah. And start spotting light late spotting other things. I don't know if y'all remember this, but it was probably about 10 years ago, there was a big ruckus at the UN because the Secretary General of the UN was talking gun control. And I don't know if it was a Cajun or a Texan, but somebody took a UN helmet to the shooting range and poked it full of 30 odd six holes and mailed it by UPS to the Secretary General of the UN and put a note in there that said, this is the message that we sent King George and General Gage about 1775, and you had better keep your behind on the other side of the ocean. And man, they wanted to investigate. They called the FBI, and look, it was 30-odd six holes. Look, there was big holes. <laughs> and boy, let me tell you, you should have heard the ruckus. I mean, that old boy just got all bent. He just didn't know what to do or what to say. It was amazing. Well, I got the answer for why Michelle or uh, Michelle or Michael Obama's mom was in the White House. What's that? She's got to teach him how to dress. As oh, a woman. Okay. <laughs> we probably won't touch that. We won't touch that. Of course, I Michelle. Of course, <laughs> Michelle. Probably, hey, Michelle probably said the same thing. We won't touch that. Yeah. <laughs> We need, we need to be careful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there's some issues that we probably won't get into yeah, for there's rules too. Yeah, we, we want to stay on the we air. Have we have to, to we have to behave. We, we don't need AOC kicking us off and yeah. us having to explain to Tom in six months. Yeah. We One gotta, night we were on TV and yeah. we got kicked off the air. <laughs> we got him kicked off. You know, talking about, about guns and everything, I was reading an article where you don't see in the mainstream news where a 13-year-old killed a six-time felon. There was a home invasion, and it was very oh, yeah, interesting. I there read were that there story. were two perps, and you can you can guess who the perps were. But this 13-year-old got a hold of his mama's gun, and by George, he was a gun control advocate. He had proper sight picture and trigger control, mm -hmm. and he <laughs> sent one to meet to meet whoever he meets. I don't think he meets Jesus, but <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, we call that remote control injection of lead, judiciously yeah, I, applied, and he took care of his business. And you know, I'm an NRA member, and I get the NRA magazine. And for those of y'all who don't get that magazine, the National Rifleman, yeah, I get. there's a whole section in there of citizens lawfully using force, and the mainstream media will never put it out there because there are hundreds of episodes daily of good citizens that are using their firearms to safe safely protect themselves and their families, but you never hear about it. No, the other thing we don't hear about in the news is what's the current stats on people killed up in uh, Chicago? I think it's something like 4,000 oh, no, people today. I just saw that. About 4,000 people today. Yeah, there's there's 47 something and, and I think 430 deaths. Mm -hmm. But, 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 Where's Reverend Jackson? I, I've never seen him up there dealing what, with what this. What I wanted to see is what is the percentages were black on black. Oh, it's it's like 98% from the last article I read. But where's Brother Sharpton? I it mean... Can't make no money on that. Oh, the grievance industry doesn't work up there. No. And folks, you know it's a very interesting thing. But if we go back historically and take a look, these liberal democratic bastions of, of, of American citizenship, Detroit, Baltimore, D.C., Chicago, are havens for crime and shooting. And it's funny. We have places that we have concealed carry. And you know, when Jim, when concealed carry was first introduced in Florida, what did we hear? Oh my God, it's going to be the Wild West. There's going to be killings in the streets. What happened? Crime went down. It's Crime amazing, went down. It? It's amazing. And and you see, Chicago's totally gun-free zone, huh? Well, at least for the honest citizens it is. Illinois yeah. is kind of rough on it. But Oh, here we go. Man, busy night tonight. Go, go ahead. ahead, caller. I know what Al Sharpton and uh, Jackson is. Uh-oh. 
Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, well, we probably won't touch that no, one either. No, we ain't going there. <laughs> yeah. Bye. We don't want to explain to Tom why we got kicked off the air yeah. after our first night. <laughs> I ended his TV show on the first night. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's rules. <laughs> yeah, there's rules. Unfortunately. But Tom kept reminding me because I would write something down on a piece of paper and he would go, No, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We thank no. you for the call though. Yeah, we appreciate so you it. you have censorship with the black shows though. The what? The black shows on AOC don't have censorship. Well, we have to behave. That's all we can say. All we're going to say is we, we have tried to be the best we can and say as close to what we need to say. Yep. We gotcha. aren't censored, that's for sure. <laughs> we're civil. <laughs> Thanks for the call. You know what's interesting is they found that the majority of these mass shooters are Democrats. They're registered Democrats. Yep. Oh, my God. No. Oh. Yes. But, and, and you know what? They're bringing that up, that they're registered Democrats. Here's, here's the other thing that's interesting. You had uh, Angel and Darden, Republicans, right? Well, kind Re of. Wait, wait. Registered <laughs> Republicans. Now, I, at my tailgate, one of my partners at the LSU tailgate, big Darden fan. Now, I didn't get to go to the last tailgate because oh, it's probably Lord. a good thing to ask yeah. him. But Angel and Darden get on the TV and slam Bitter, a fellow Republican. Well, now we know why Darden did it, why he endorsed Bell, don't we? He's going to become the chief administrator for the governor. And... When you look back, both of them were, were Democrats at one time <laughs> and, and switched and became Republicans. So today, just like Tom and I emphasized before the, the election for the Senate, right. that it would make no difference. And we weren't wrong. No, you've been right a whole lot. And we were not wrong about that. And You sure you're not psychic, Jim? No, but I will say this, that... Before the first election for Barack Obama, I told people, You're that ready? guy worries me. Yeah, they vet the refugees more than they vetted him. Well, and here, here's the thing. I, I'm a veteran. Thank you for your service, Jim. And, and the whole deal is, why are we bringing these refugees in here when we can't? We can't save the lives of our veterans at a supposedly government-run VA hospital. We have homeless veterans on the street, some by choice. I'm not saying all are there because, you yeah, know. Yeah, but we, we can honestly say, and you know better than I do, that not nearly enough was done for those guys. If they choose to be homeless, well, we make a choice. But I still think that if they were given the proper VA care and had proper case management, that they should receive, they would be in a better circumstance. I, I will give you my personal case. I came back, I, I finished out, I was okay. You were Brown Water Navy. Brown Water Navy in, in Vietnam. Folks, do y'all understand what that means? Jim was part of the, uh, the Riverine patrol boat service that uh, basically did patrols mm -hmm. as a gunboat. And it's a smaller boat than a regular Navy ship. Well, it's good but, for life. But, and they got into a lot of stuff, too, because they were patrolling the Mekong Delta. Plus, the other little thing that I did is, and you see them on the TV, the landing crafts. We took 60, 55-gallon drums of diesel fuel up the river. That, 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 those folks don't go but six or eight knots. That's a good target. <laughs> yeah. We never got, well, we got hit one time. We did lose a guy, but... Here's, here's a point of what you were making about the VA and not taking care of their people. I came back, and I'm not going to say what happened because I really don't care about talking about that, but something seriously happened that would change any person's life. I was 19 years old, by the way, mm -hmm. 20 years old. And uh, I went over there at 19, came back at 21. 
and and I was having nightmares, flashbacks, really bad. That's bad a, things were happening. That's a standard response to combat. And so I, Milwaukee has one of the largest VA hospitals really? in in the country. So I said, okay, I'm going to go over there. I went over there. I went through five people. I was getting the runaround. The bureaucraties. And the fifth guy, now you have to understand, I had a very short fuse. <laughs> Unbeknownst to the guy behind the desk. And he made some very derogatory comments about Vietnam veterans. And You didn't apply your foot, did you? No. Uh, he came across the desk with me. <laughs> oh! You took the bull by the horns, did you? Yeah. And then these two big guys showed up and escorted me out of the facility. <laughs> but what the point I'm getting at is, one of the things he said is, we don't know how to treat Vietnam veterans. And I'm going, I, I, I made this comment to him. I said, well, let, let me ask you a question. In World War II, did they have bullets? And sure he did. said, well, yeah. And I said, well, let me ask you something. Do you think those bullets were any different in Vietnam and what happened to the individuals that were there than it happened to them in World War II? And I said, look, I wasn't out in the rice paddies. I didn't go. I wasn't a full-time member of the, the river boats, but I did hey, my you share were there. of time. If you and, got shot at, you were there. And, and the whole thing is, is that you get shot at one time, the first incident that happened when I was over there, we were floating pontoons in to make the pier, mm -hmm. and the, and they floated a dang mine down and blew it up. After that, <laughs> yeah, you know, one day at a time. Reality set But the in. whole the whole point is that I experienced that, and I wasn't in near as bad a shape as some of the other guys. And honestly, I I did some things for fifteen years. I don't know how I graduated from college. I don't know how I kept a, a job with GE. I don't know how I got all that done. Mm -hmm. And I never got help from the VA. And I went to counseling through my own thing. Oh, but the VA bureaucrats have gotten their raises and their bonuses, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, and, and, and the whole thing is is that I, I wonder if that guy ever made any derogatory statements to him because he was... His eyes were You know, he big. may have needed dental work later because he made some of those statements to the wrong person. Well, I, I didn't get a chance to do that. He must have. Oh, pressed. no. I mean, from some of the other GIs who came through there who were a little, more, possible. A little more forward motivated. He must have pressed a button or something at his desk because <laughs> them guys showed up pretty quick. <laughs> Panic button. Yeah. But the thing, the point I'm trying to make is it's not about me, but it, that is how a lot of the people are treated. Now, I did go to the VA in, in Alexandria, but the guy that did my psych report, he put stuff in the report, and I don't know where he got it from. And I couldn't, I, there was no way for me to challenge that. Well, and the thing that, that's so bad about, about the way, I've talked to a lot of veterans about the VA, and a lot of it is about money. Tom and I had a mutual friend who was at the, uh, uh, the siege of Quezon. I want to say that was about 68. And uh, he was uh, wounded with a, um, a bayonet through the side at the siege and was engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He was there for the whole thing. He was actually there as a chopper mechanic and, and got stuck there because he, he, he happened to be on one of the choppers coming in to work on something, and, and here it went. And he did not get his full PTSD discharge benefits until 98. Folks, even under Common Core math, that's 30 years. So what the VA does is they're waiting for these GIs to die so they don't have to pay them any benefits that's or absolutely anything. absolutely correct. And if you really want to get aggravated, go back and look in the 50s at our nuclear veterans. There is a very interesting TV oh. show called Trinity and Beyond that's narrated by William Shatner. And the interesting thing is is it shows our GIs in the trenches and a nuclear bomb is popped over their head in the Nevada desert. And guess what? None of those guys got VA benefits. None of the towns that got irradiated got benefits. And in fact, 
John Wayne and all of the actors in the Genghis Khan movie died of cancer from the military irradiating the desert and didn't tell anybody that there was a problem, that wow. they shouldn't film the movie Genghis Khan. If you go back and do the research, and I, I watched that movie, I, and Jim, to this day, those benefits have never been paid. There were towns that they irradiated that everybody died of leukemia and cancer, and the military and the government denies it. Jim, it's on film. Yeah, I know. You watch and, it live. I and, watched it. I'm and, just sitting there just going you know, like. It's the same way with me. I took the Agent Orange test. They put me through that at the VA. That's and another I thing. My Tom and I's buddy I, was full I of Agent have, Orange. I didn't have any symptoms. Well, you were blessed. And, and but, you know, I, I dispute that. Now, they came out just several years ago, and thank God for the BBA, National BBA, fighting in D.C., stating certain things. First of all, after eight and a half months, they shut down the boats, the, the, the division I was with, and changed things around. Okay. So I ended up going to an Army base, and uh, uh, it was my first thing with incoming. But... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, we learned about duck and cover. Yeah, and, and bunkers. But um, the thing was, is we went down there, and I sat on a radio most of the time I was there, and spent four months there until we left to come back. But they came out with this list for Agent Orange. If you were on the river boats, uh oh, you qualified. If you were at an army base, you qualified. Because they doused that country so, liberally with it. So, so I, uh, I sent in a letter. And let's see, that was in 2013, December of 2013. This is what? 2015? Right. I still haven't heard anything. No. I've not gotten a reply. You're holding your breath waiting? Because I should get another 10 or 20% disability for that. Well, yeah. yeah. You know. Jim, it's a crying shame what they do to our veterans. It is a crying shame because, you know, it is. when a person has the moral authority and the guts to volunteer to go overseas and fight and come back and to get that level of mistreatment, we give free food stamps and medical care to our jihadi friends quicker than we do any veteran. You, you know... A lot of people doubted the stories about getting spit on. Oh no, and, that and, was true. Stuff. We uh, we were drinking the whole way back from Vietnam, <laughs> twenty four well, hours. Well, hey. And we landed, and we went to the San Francisco airport. Now San Francisco. Bunch of liberals. And a bunch of them were there. We call it the left coast for a reason. And, and uh, we were still feeling pretty good until you got and, off the plane. And then somebody spit on me, and I was in the crowd. And my buddies were dragging me. <laughs> Jim, you're going to get arrested. I don't care. You don't spit on me. And, and that stuff happens. But the thing is, is today, you, you look at the long list of veterans that died waiting for care. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed enough that I don't need to depend on the VA and, and to get my medical care. It scares me. Mm -hmm. To think, I went to the VA hospital several times as a visitor to hand out stuff. And, and I went up there as a person going through the system, which I didn't really mm -hmm. have a problem. It's a shame. But the thing was, what I saw in sitting around in wheelchairs, and you're there four or five hours going through the process, and you come back, and that same guy is still sitting there in that wheelchair waiting mm -hmm. for whatever I ask him if he wanted a water or a soda or something. And he said, no, 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 they said they're coming soon, I thought. Yeah. Really? You know, but the thing is, uh, you, you look at all this, uh, you look at Obamacare, you look at Common Core federal education program, no matter what some of you people think, uh, you look at all the different programs that are going on. And, and God help us, I'm 69 years old. Who knows how long I've got left? And I got grandchildren that are four years old. And what kind of world are we gonna leave them with? That's the big question. What kind of world are we gonna leave them with? It's not gonna be the same one that I grew up in, in Pennsylvania and living in a town of 400 people. That's Even me, it, uh, it's not the same world that, that I grew up in. And I, I, I was a child of the 80s, and, not and, the same place. And the thing is, is that, 
uh, you know, I, 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 there's never anything wrong. And, and I didn't do too bad with my math. If I got through an engineering course, and I didn't have Common Core. Thank God. But, but I, I, see, I see the frustration with the kids. I mean, if you went to as many meetings as I did in the last two years and see the frustration of parents, teachers, and kids. Oh, it's terrible. I've talked to parents. They're pulling their hair out trying to figure this stuff out. And the big problem is you've got kids who were once A students who don't want to go to school and they can't do the work. And, and it's not because they're not bright, but it's because this, this farce called Common well, Core has been foisted upon yeah, us. Yeah, I want to I finish up the last 30 seconds. Please pray for Tom. Uh, and all the prayers are needed. Uh, we'll try and keep you updated. I do it on Facebook and through my membership in the Acadiana Patriots. And and Tom and each each of us here finds a way, but pray for Tom. He's uh, been a great friend to me and all, and all of us in here. God bless.